Hello, hello everyone. I am Leticia Sabsai, Associate Professor of Gender and Contemporary Culture at the Department of Gender Studies. And here with me are Professor Emma McCoy, the LSE Vice President and Vice Chancellor for Education, and Dr. Claire <coughs> Gordon, Head of the LSE Teaching and Learning Center. Thank you both for being here with me to have this conversation on gender studies and education at LSE and higher education more broadly. We thought this was a good opportunity um, to reflect on these questions in the run-up of the 30th anniversary of the gender department at LSE. So I thought that a good way to start was to have us thinking and talking a little bit about our views or experiences um, about either the gender department or what has been, you know, gender studies uh, at the school more broadly and what have been our experiences about this. I don't know if any one of you want to kick off? So I, guess, I, I mean, I'm happy to start. I mean, having just joined um, in October of last year, I've, I've now been here for actually pretty much exactly six months, actually. And, and I, it, I've now had the opportunity to meet all of the departments across the school. And there's such a variety, I think, of teaching. And I think what has struck me, particularly about gender, I think is it, and and the teaching that happens in 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 gender studies. I think is the is really the kind of inclusive approach that you take. I, I think you really set the stall on how you create a safe space for your students. And I think I mean partly that's you're probably having I would imagine some of the most kind of complex and difficult discussions as part of your teaching, particularly given the current kind of well national and in fact global context, um, the kind of gender discussions that are going on. And, and I think another thing that I found really refreshing is the way you're kind of, I think, really trying to reframe what, what um, the LSE experience is. I think a lot of the students at LSE have you know, they're just fixated on their final grades often because they are so important. And I think that that, that focus on education um, and the importance of and beauty, I guess, of the study, I think is something that I've really seen shining through in some of the examples that you said, trying to make the students think about that rather than, you know, just working for their classification. So I think it's been really kind of refreshing to see that in a department, particularly one that is so it's so competitive often our students are very competitive and the way that you're very clear with the students about that from the beginning that they're, they're here to study the subject I think is is just really refreshing thank you so maybe I'll come in now so unlike Emma I've been at LSE for a very long time um, and working in the area of education enhancement for more than a decade and, and um, I suppose I'll try and say some slightly different things. I think one of the things that I think the um, gender studies department does so well and really embodies is, is how we can really think about the relationship between research and educational teaching. It's not in two separate worlds. It's not a zero sum game. The, the, the kind of approaches to research based teaching and, and, and the sort of critical reflexivity that the, the, um, that the colleagues bring into the classroom, bring into the the for for really quite probing, challenging um, discussions with with the, the students are so important. And I think that that the gender studies department also really um, epitomizes that transformative learning experience that students have and can have, and I hope they all do um, across the school. But I think in the gender studies department, that's a real sort of um, it really epitomizes that sort of transformative possibilities of, of, of learning. And I suppose the, the final point I thought I wanted to make is the sort of um, interdisciplinary approach that, 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 that the, the department takes to looking at gender from a whole range, through a whole range of different lenses, theorizing, conceptualizing, challenging, provoking, um, and, and, and not being frightened even when it's challenging and difficult for both staff and students to provoke. And, and contest 
So I think these are all the things that in a way should be at the heart of, in my view, a social science education at LSE and, and, and is embodied by the approach to the Gender Studies Department to Education. Yeah, no, no, I would certainly kind of agree. I was having a discussion actually with with one of your with one of your colleagues, the teacher, about Chat GPT and and the use within some of the assessments, and um, uh, the assessments were just so incredibly linked to research. And I think actually beyond that, it was taking a kind of a very recent paper, um, and then a very really recent article, and then not only that, it was kind of reframing it as. Um, you know, how would this be discussed from a, a kind of a demographer's point of view or from a from an actual academic in gender studies point of view or as a policymaker? So there's some real innovations that really make the students think. And I, and I think another thing that I found kind of really innovative was the use of self-reflections from, from the students as well in their assessments, which I think is is kind of leading the way in creative assessments, um, if I'm being honest. And I think beyond that, it was really speaking to the students about how to approach the work, that teaching them how to how to be reflective and analytical. So I would absolutely agree with, with Claire that I think that the gender studies department is, is has come up with some really creative approaches to that kind of research rich education. And, 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 and of course, the majority of those types of assessments really are AI resistant. So I think it's exactly the kind of assessments that we want to be seeing that that go beyond just us regurgitating material from articles. Yeah, and just to follow on from that, I, you know, um, I think you have a real sense of, of a department of colleagues, of staff, of PhD students, professional services, really kind of dynamically um, reflecting on how to effectively teach and enable student learning and I, I know that sort of um, and to create those kind of hopefully principled and brave spaces but definitely brave spaces for challenging discussions and, and also kind of trying out challenging pedagogies. I remember many years ago um, observing classes where on one of the or seminars actually on one of the courses or maybe several um, students were being the facilitators of, 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 of the weekly seminar and the, and, the, and the seminar teacher would work carefully with students. So it wasn't just throw you in at the deep end. They would work with the students. They would discuss what they were going to do. And I think that really, uh, and it was really powerful and really tur up, upturned or turned upside down those power relationships, which, which, are, which are whether we acknowledge that explicitly are there in the in the teaching and learning space so i was i was thinking about that i was also thinking about um the sort of wonderful work the department's done to enable students to present um the outcomes of of, of the research work that they've done on their programs and sort of so to close that kind of research cycle that we as academics and scholarly members of the community seek to do we don't just do the research we we seek to communicate and engage with outside audiences and I think that sort of closing the loop on the program not just through the dissertation or the extended piece of research but actually then having an opportunity to present it either in a conference or through poster presentation or even recording it, it is really really powerful and it seems to me that you know every single program at LSE should involve an element of extended research, whether it's at the undergraduate or postgraduate level, and then that opportunity to present back to the wider world. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, you mentioned so many <clears throat> things, but it's, <clears throat> I would like to highlight a few, a few, because one is the question of institutional cultures, um, expectations and how to work with our students, um, the question of competitiveness and what is expected of them and what are the different learning spaces that they have being in larger groups in lectures where they're also invited to participate in different forms in seminars or in these um, other formats and get them to be able to enjoy that learning process, leaving a little bit aside, of course, the fact that they want to perform well and the competitiveness or 
sometimes you know the, the the fantasy that they need to know everything and they're only entitled to speak when they think that they really know uh what they're talking about and we do a lot of work on the idea that you know in order to have a productive learning experience it's very important to start from what we don't know and share what we don't know and try to figure out how to think about that together um which has to do with these ideas of of collective learning and try to challenge a little bit the individualistic competitive um kind of zeitgeist in which we live and so I appreciate that that is picked up at other uh, levels. And I think it informs also a disposition to learning for our students, not only for their master's degree, but also in life and in other courses. And I'm aware that they bring these to other courses and sometimes they feel kind of strange or they can see the difference in different classes and when this is taken seriously or less seriously. Um, and also the question of their year with us, we all we only teach <clears throat> master students and PhDs. So they have the, for those who are doing this in full as full times, it's just one year that they are with us. So it's very intense. It's very demanding for them. And so the process, so for them to come to LSE, to get to know the institution, what is available, how they can engage, participate more broadly, and also within the department has to happen very quickly in a way. And it's amazing for us how year after year we see the journey that our students are able to, you know, make in just very little time, if we think about it, it's just a year um, where they start and where they end, it's like, wow. And it's very, very transformative in how they position themselves in relation to knowledge, the amount that they learn, but also in terms of being a transformative experience um, because of the nature of gender studies, um, sometimes that transformative experience means that they radically change their views or they learn to unknow and re-know uh, many things about how they thought about the, the world. And that can be emotionally and personally very challenging. And that is why we put so much emphasis on the question of both inclusivity and also these ethics of care. Because for us, it's very clear from the very beginning that there's a, a personal transformation that demands a lot of support from us, both in the teaching spaces specifically, but also in terms of mentorship and pastoral care. Students go through different kinds of, you know, uh, crisis in the good sense, as they learn and as they start to feel personally the need to think again and rethink again, uh, what their views were, what their presumptions or a number of things that they haven't thought about before engaging in this field of study. And that's also um, very moving to see. And it does, it's labor intensive and we're happy because it's part of the nature of learning uh, in the social sciences more broadly, I would say. Um, and also the question of interdisciplinarity, which poses specific challenges because most of our students, if they didn't have any 
prior training in gender studies or in more interdisciplinary fields. Of course, they come with their disciplinary knowledges and how to negotiate that with an interdisciplinary field, which always su suppose that they might be more knowledgeable about some aspects that touch upon gender studies, but totally unaware of others. Also, is a you know it's it's a challenge for them personally to come as master students, not undergrads, not really knowing of you know broader subfields or um, subject matters and have to engage with them from their own position. And then the work is to bring that to their own disciplines or their own professional development. So that's another aspect that we really have to work a lot uh, to get students feel comfortable about that. And on the question of assessment, of course, reflexivity is part of the nature of gender studies. Um, it has to do with the ethicality or the ethics of doing research or working in the field as um, in other roles. Um, yes, I would, I would stop there because I can, you know, go on and on and on and on. But yes, self-reflexivity is part of the nature of the, of the field. Now, oh, and the last one in terms of assessment, I'm glad that you picked up on that because we're trying to both doing these kinds of, you know, um, work and assessment, sometimes it's formative work. We're both trying to target both the question of putting them in different roles to understand what the learning process is, but also it has to do with skill developments because regardless of what they are going to do as professionals, most likely they will have to either report on their research. And as you said, Claire, present their research. They might have to facilitate meetings, even if they're not you know, in a teaching environment. So it's also about giving them the opportunity to start experiencing the different things that they might have to do as professionals, either in the field or maybe in adjacent fields or incorporating what they've learned in gender studies as a lens, as a, an analytical lens in their own fields. It's, yeah, it's really, you know, we're, we're trying to address as we can different demands um and well, that, the... that's really sorry i was going to say that's really really interesting what you were saying about kind of transformate the transformation of your education and i think that that's certainly something that i've seen um since i've arrived at lse across so many departments that it's not education shouldn't be transactional i think it should absolutely be um transformational and i think that that, that that's really about actually our students being um, kind of open to much more criticism, being open to alternative views. And I think that you make a really good point, actually, that that means that they develop kind of a critical self-awareness that might actually mean that they shift their own position, which is something I hadn't necessarily kind of thought about the, the impact that that can have on, on someone's actually on, on, on identities. So that's kind of a really interesting issue that we probably need to, to really think about more carefully across the school because you're right that that's um I mean transforming and and understanding it's been quite interesting even since I've joined at LSE how I'm reframing and rethinking how I approach how I approach things now being exposed to to much more kind of much more social science than I was when I was working at Imperial which is purely STEM based and I think it's just a, a kind of a wonderful thing being open to alternative views. And I think that if you're managing to do this in a one year program, I think it's unbelievably impressive. I mean, one of the things I was thinking about in line with what 
you're saying, Emma and Leticia, is the sort of, an, and I find it really interesting in a sort of social science university. And obviously there are people who come from different paradigms and perspectives around what counts as valid research methodologies and um, theoretical frameworks and so on is this aspect of the kind of emotional labor of learning and, and, and what that means for our students and what that also means for faculty, um, graduate teaching assistants who, who, who may be trying to enable and support those learning um, journeys. And so I think the kind of work that the department has done and grappled with, and I, and I think it, it's really powerful that I know over the years, the Department of Gender Studies has been willing to have some really difficult conversations with its students and has themselves been willing to take on board critique from its students of, 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 of the department. And I think to create that transformative learning experience, faculty also have to be willing to kind of be exposed a little bit. And, and I also think it's really interesting because we have debates around sort of, um, you know, what the kind of role of academic mentoring in, in a student's learning journey. And I think kind of if it's quite hard, particularly in the context that you're describing within this into the sort of very ambitious interdisciplinary context of gender studies to separate those out because in in order to create that transformative learning possibility i think the teachers have to be willing to take on board some of that emotional labor create the spaces where people are willing to get it wrong or say they don't know something which i think is really really important for learning is to make mistakes and and i think that can be very difficult in a university such as LSE, where there's a lot of high achievers, and as you've both said, there's a competitive, there are strong strains of competitive cultures in the university. And so it's interesting how the gender studies department has put so much effort into trying to build a slightly different subculture. So it's to open up that possibility. Um, there's a book um, by Gert, I think it's called Gert Biefster, cool. I think it's I think it's called something like the beautiful risk of learning or something like that I can't remember the exact title but it's it's risky learning and education is risky because you don't know if you're willing to be transformed who are you going to be as I'm always talking about identity when you come out the other side and so 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 that kind of holistic approach to thinking about the educational journey I think is so important and maybe some other departments would not see it in the same way but I think it's it's being willing to kind of engage with those questions, which is something the whole school could learn more about from, from the gender studies department. Yeah, and, and that awareness that actually a student's development, it's not just about the content of the course, isn't it? The fact that you've taken a much broader, a broader view of what development means and what student development means. And it's the ethical considerations, it's the kind of, the, the kind of social considerations. Um, so, so far beyond the, the just the, what we're teaching our students, I think that they have the space in a university environment to truly develop into, um, you know, the versions of themselves that, that, that they want to become. And I think it's giving them the space to flourish, really, and to find themselves as part of that journey, I think is really important. And I was, this is... <clears throat> I was thinking about, as I was hearing you and hearing me, <laughs> um, this also has another implication that I don't know to what extent we as a school need to keep thinking about. And I think the gender studies can contribute to, which is the fact that we do have um, graduate teaching assistants um, doing some teaching in our co-course, the co-course that runs across our now eight master's programs degrees. Um, and also early career fellows who are doing the first, the first or the first, or you know, they're young scholars and they don't have that much experience uh, in teaching. And actually these are positions that are supposed to be career development and where they are also going through a process of learning as, educator, as educators, we are all are. Even if we, we had, you know, 30 years of experience, we keep learning, but we are also 
in this context that we have described what teaching and learning means at the Department of Gender Studies with the fact that we're also asking very young scholars or graduate teaching assistants to really do very complicated work where it's not only students that expose themselves and become more vulnerable to critique, to have to provide and facilitate and <clears throat> be there as the adults in the room when very complex and sensitive conversations are taking place where the subjectivity of the educator is also at stake and how to negotiate that and what kind of support and training we give to our younger teachers for whom this is also part of their career development. So there's also a lot of work that we do we don't do enough just because we don't have the resources, the time to support that learning for our teachers. And I think this should be center. This, this should be center stage. Because sometimes as deputy for teaching, I felt myself asking too much of them if we were not able to, in parallel to this, provide sustained support to, the, to those who have less experience in teaching um, to support that process, being training sessions where we can check in with each other, how things are going, how they felt, um, complex situations that they might not know, uh, very well or not being not sure whether they handle them we well enough or they want to double check with their own mentors whether that was a good outcome or not all these sorts of things um we we do have an early career development program where we include our graduate teaching assistants, all the career, all the early career fellows, and in some of the sessions also the cohort of PhDs, which runs almost not weekly because nobody has the time, not even our fellows to do that, but we make sure that bi-weekly or so, we do have some session that has to do with their career development, but I do think we still don't do enough in terms of teaching focus, troubleshooting um, kind of issues, but we're doing that. So for instance, for our supervisors, for the MSc master's uh, dissertations or independent research projects, we do have a weekly checking meeting because what tends to happen is that for younger teachers, they will try to compensate what they feel as less experience with more work or more support or more, which is not the way to go really. So there's also, anyway, just wanted to share that because I think something that, because across the, the school we have, Young. We have a high number of across the school. I mean, relative to the sector, we um, we have a large number of PhD students or GTAs who teach and fellows, and and they have a lot of responsibility as well relative to some other disciplines, other universities. And I think that sort of, I think you're, I think, you know, this is another area where where we, where we could be exchanging more practice. Um, at LSE, it's, it's it's a shame that, from my perspective, for example, that the deputy heads for teaching and education um, forum meetings, we so often get into processes, data, technology, stuff that's not working, which of course makes people's lives really, really difficult. But it means that we don't have enough time to share practice across the school. And I think that probably, you know, I think GTAs and fellows are supported to differing degrees across the school. And obviously, there's the central provision as well um, but there's not a particularly um, 
validated culture of learning about education and engaging about education at LSE. You know, we've been working hard to develop that across the school, but but we still have some way to go. And I think you're right that you know when you're a early career um, academic and you're you're teaching for the first time, obviously your 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 teachers will be encountering pretty acute form of what you're describing, but everybody has questions everybody worries are they getting it right they everybody spends way too much time on it because you know you've got students whose futures are in your hands and and i think that um i think it, i think it, it's probably one of these parts of an academic career that's unacknowledged labor it's another aspect of the kind of unacknowledged labor that that that, that people engage in um so i suppose those are my two points there that we could have much more cross school learning about how we support early career academics and also that there is this sort of labor there's so much hidden labor in in, in an academic career that doesn't get acknowledged but is really important i wanted to bring that because it's one of our priorities at the moment in terms of i mean it's kind of an interesting point is now just just kind of thinking about it now i think we want our, our kind of our graduate teaching assistants and our early career teachers just to be really effective teachers because I mean we the level of the courses at LSE is I mean it's really challenging, demanding material, rightly so. I mean, I think we have to, you know, we have incredibly high standards across our programs here. And I think developing developing kind of skilled teachers. It is also really important, but then that's broader than just the, the kind of, you know, the teaching methods and the it's how you how you do manage classrooms and how you create environments where students can really thrive and take on board um, the kind of challenging learning that we're asking them to, to kind of manage. So I think we do probably need to think quite carefully about the support we provide teaching staff beyond just the standard. This, this is how you deliver a, you know, a standard tutorial or seminar? I mean, I think that we find that the people who engage actively in the central provision, so the, there is the GTA induction program and our postgraduate certificate in higher education, that gives them some building blocks. And then if that gets combined, so that gives them building blocks in terms of good effective practice and teaching learning assessment. And then, you know, the, the perfect situation is when that can be combined with that, that disciplinary or interdisciplinary departmental um, engagement as well so that so so that so that teachers build up early career fa teachers build up a network of possibility across the school both from experts or other people in the same boat as them but then that they're also engaging in those really important disciplinary discussions about you know what does it mean to be a, an effective teacher in the discipline of gender studies what you know and 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 who do i go to and i think that's really i mean i, I I, I think we've come a long way from when I first started teaching, but you just kind of hoped you were doing it right. Yes, um, exactly. <laughs> you just didn't know, but now we or, have an. Or it was, or it was purely the apprenticeship model, and I was, I was kind of very lucky, I think, in having had some kind of outstanding um, teaching when I was studying myself, and I think clearly, you know, I, I took on board quite a lot of that. But I think having then that kind of mixed with the more formal. Uh, kind of instruction on how to teach, I think is really important. Um, I, you know, certainly I think there's still a place where we can learn from each other by watching and, and kind of, uh, you know, lots of peer evaluations of lectures and things. I think that that is also really important that, uh, that we, we have good, men good teaching mentors as well as kind of academic mentors, I think. Mostly when on, um... Maybe we want, we want to touch upon that when we are working with interdisciplinary fields, which means that, you know, it's very difficult to be an expert in, in an interdisciplinary field in all aspects of, you know, what that interdisciplinarity might entail. Um, and at that point, I, I think I would like to hear your views as well in, in terms of, you know, thinking about interdisciplinarity, contributions that you think that the gender department in terms of education might have made to the school pedagogically speaking and how to work with interdisciplinarity 
at the teaching and learning level or things that we might be able to contribute as people that have been doing that <laughs> all our lives. <laughs> Emma, do you want to go first? Or oh, well, I think that's one for you, Claire. Okay. I think <laughs> um, no, that's fine. Well, first of all, I think, yes. Well, I mean, I think that kind of, you know, your, the, the gender studies department and perhaps the European Institute um, have, have been trailblazers in, 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 in the kind of in, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary space. And I think that we can have, and of course we have LSE 100 as well at the undergraduate level. And I think that there's some room to really learn from the the journey you've been on and and how you've interrogated notions of discipline uh, multidisciplinarity transdisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity i mean we use these terms quite a lot in in higher education but do we actually know what we mean by them what is what is an authentic interdisciplinary um educational experience and i think that we 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 should and we need to have to learn from the gender um, studies department in this space and to be honest um, in the recent teaching excellence framework which of course postgraduate doesn't concern luckily for you um, postgraduate um, provision um, we were being asked by the regulator to articulate what we see as I mean it's a bit neoliberal but nonetheless what we see as the educational gains that our students experience at LSE specifically and one of the things we we highlighted, and we're going to have to try and measure and evaluate it now over the next four years, unless something gets thrown up in the air by change of government and change of framework, we articulated the notion that many of our undergraduate students are studying uh, social sciences, but in an interdisciplinary context. And so I I really do think that there's a huge opportunity for us to learn from you and work with you um, to try and think about, well, how are we going to what does that actually mean? It's, it's a nice thing to say, but what does it actually mean? Do we need to do more in terms of integrating this more consciously and actively or bringing out what's implicit to make it explicit in our programs? And then how do we demonstrate the impact of that learning experience? So I really do think that, you know, this is not just lip service. I really do think that we it's really important. And of course, my final point on that is just really kind of, if we are creating um students to go out into the world and make a difference in whatever their chosen field is it's impossible to do that through a narrow disciplinary lens i think really to add to that i think uh, claire's absolutely right we're living in kind of a, an ever increasingly complex world and i think that um a single disciplinary approach is just not going to be fit fit for purpose really for those students that want to go out and understand and contribute towards solving some of the some of the grand challenges that I think that we that we face at the moment. Well, we have a plan. That would be great. Not a plan, but an, a horizon. We have a horizon. Work together <laughs> on interdisciplinarity, teaching and learning, or interdisciplinarity and what I really? think. Yeah, and I think it would be as, and I know that um the the directors of LSE 100 are very, very committed to engaging in dialogue about this. And, 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 I, and I remember um, last year at the, at the um, Student Interdisciplinary Research Conference, which, is, we, which has been happening at, at the LSE for the last two years, and there's another one um, this summer. One of the things that struck me most in the opening pa panel was, was that um, one of the panelists, and I think it was Chris Blunt, who's one of the directors of LSE 100, spoke about the subversive nature of interdisciplinary learning. And I really liked that because I think, you know, because actually a lot of academia is could be said to be held back because of these strict disciplinary, these sort of apparently quite strict disciplinary boundaries and it's in, impacted on the way we publish and so on. But I think there is something potentially quite sort of creatively subversive in a positive way about interdisciplinarity. True, I like that. I will take it as well. Thank you both very much for joining in this conversation that feels like just a starting and I can, you know, imagine many, you know, we, we, we mentioned so many um, issues that it would be really nice to keep talking about. Uh, the conversation is ongoing. Thank you very much.
Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you so much. Have a great Brilliant. break. Bye. Bye.